In this video, we're going to take a look at the solo section for an arrangement that I did for a JS Bach tune called Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring, my mother's favorite song. Again, she's no longer with us, but she used to look forward to me playing this every year at Christmas time. And even though it's not really a Christmas tune, it kind of is played at this time of year. And if you don't recognize the tune, it goes like this. And in the last video, we went through some ideas on how to approach it. It's definitely a little bit odd because it's in 9-8 time, so it takes a little bit of getting used to. There's some syncopation and things going on. And then you get to this solo section, which is really only eight bars. Now, I've kind of outlined the bass line where it's going from G to F sharp to E, and those chords are written over top of those bass notes. Let me grab something to write with here, full screen snip. So what it is, is this is really just a G sort of major seven for the entire chord, or for the entire bar, I should say. And then the next one is just E minor seven for the entire bar, then A minor seven for the entire bar, and then D seven. So those other chords are really just passing chords. So what you have is, if you're counting off in your head, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. I just try to think of it like six, eight, and then add another bar of three, eight times, so. As far as the soloing is concerned, I, I think it's a good idea to sort of think of chords in the left hand from a very simplistic perspective because the rhythm is not going to be that easy to do. So you're gonna to wanna to not have to think too much about what the left hand is doing. So let me throw out some voicings for you here. I think, let's just do it like this. We got an F sharp here, a B, and an E chord, and an E. So that's a little chordal voicing. So this is voiced in force. For the G chord, then E minor, you're gonna go down a step and do it in force as well. So you've got E, A, and B. So this is just gonna make it a little bit easier. Then let's put a cluster in for the A minor chord. Let's do uh, C, E, and B. And then when we get to the D7, let's do also fourth. So we got C, F sharp, C, and let's do sharp nine, which is F. So this is the G minor chord, E minor seven, A minor seven, and then D7. And then in the right hand, it's a combination of things. So let me just do something first. So I think pretty much stick to the sort of G scale. That would be a good idea. So just a G major scale. And that's gonna work all day long. It's not the most interesting thing to do, but it's definitely going to be a good start. Then in addition to that, I think blues and playing some passing notes and some riffs and things on a blue scale is a good idea. So G, B flat, C, C sharp, D, F, and that's kind of our blues scale. So, So 
So there's a couple of ideas. And then in addition to that, you might want to consider some bebop scales. Let me put a link up here in the corner to some video or to a video that I did on bebop scales. So a G bebop scale. And then E minor bebop scale. And then A minor bebop scale. And then D7. Probably a good idea when you're practicing this not to play it with the bass and drums right away, even though I'm going to put a link to the backing track and the sheet music below. It's really to sort of get your fingers around the concept of 9-8 time and the chords that are passing by fairly quickly. Okay, that's really, I mean, when you're learning to play jazz, and of course many of you are intermediate to advanced people, and probably even some professionals, I'm pretty sure that's a concept that you're very familiar with, just sort of working out fingerings for each of the different chords as they're passing by. And what I'm gonna do now is play the entire tune for you, give, a, give you an idea of what it should sound like, what the arrangement sounds like, and again, I'm gonna post a link below so you can grab the arrangement and the backing track and practice all day long. Hopefully you'll play it at your next gig or your next concert because people love this tune and they recognize it instantly as a very famous tune by J.S. Bach and also it's kind of got a great relationship with that whole sort of jazz idiom. So let me play it for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, but stick around. I'm going to play it right through to the end. Let's have some fun. Mm -hmm. 